audio jungle. In this video, we're going to tackle one of the most common questions we get. What is the difference between bodies and components in fusion? Let's start with the foundational building block, bodies. In fusion, a body is any continuous 3D shape. That might be a sphere, or a coil, or really anything that you're modeling in fusion. Bodies can be identified with the cylinder icon in the browser. And the key definition of a body is that it has to be continuous. If you take a body and cut it in half, you now have two bodies. Bodies share the coordinate system and origin of your top level assembly. If you copy and paste a body, changes you make to one body will not affect the other. You can right click a body in your browser and select create components from bodies. In Fusion, a component is a part that has its own unique origin and is therefore capable of motion in the design space. A component primarily serves as a container for a variety of design objects. For example, here we're working on a piece of furniture. If you look back at the browser on the left, you can see that the base is a component designated by this block icon. There's also this multi-block icon, which identifies a component that contains other components as well as design objects. If we expand component base one, this reveals several other objects nested within the component, including a set of origins, a few design bodies, sketches, and a couple construction planes. One important feature that components have is their own unique timeline. If we hover over a component in the browser and select the radial button, we can activate it. If we then take a look at the timeline at the bottom of the canvas, you'll notice the design history is now different. The design history that you see here is specific to the component that you just activated. You activate your top level assembly again your timeline will switch back to its default view. Components are great not just for organization, but also for design reuse. So say you want to use this base in another design. If your base were just a random collection of sketches and bodies, you wouldn't have an easy way to bring it into your new design. However, by housing all of these individual aspects of the design inside of a component, you can export just that one component into a new design. We can export it and save it to the Fusion Cloud Storage. In our data panel, we can then right click the exported file and insert into a current design. When we insert this into a new design, you'll see the same component from our original design with all of its associated objects, origin, bodies, and sketches. It's also worth noting that each component has a unique part name, number, and description within its properties. Another thing to note is how components are named in the browser. When you copy and paste a component with the standard paste command, these two components are linked together. If you make a change to one, it will change the other. The number colon structure can identify these connected components after their name. For example, base colon two is the second instance of base, which is base colon one. If you copy and paste a component with the paste new command, then your new component will not be linked to the original. So to recap what makes a component different from a body, every component has a unique timeline, every component has a unique origin and coordinate system, every component has a unique part name, number, and description, and if you copy and paste a component, changes you make to one component will affect the other depending on the paste command. The assembly sits at the top of our design hierarchy and can contain one or multiple components. Components can contain one or multiple bodies, including other design objects like sketches, construction geometry. Let me show you one last example workflow. If we grab a surface of this credenza, we can then do a simple extrude command, go back over to the operation section of the dialog. 
We have the ability to modify the body I'm referencing with a join or a cut, but I can also create a body or component immediately. If we select new body and press OK, then you'll have a new body created in the main bodies folder in your browser. Let's undo that and extrude again. This time we'll select new component for the operation and select OK. Now we can see we have a new component listed at the bottom of the browser. If you don't see a new component created in the browser, make sure you check what component you currently have activated. If you have a specific component activated, Fusion will create the new component there instead of the overall main assembly. And there you have it. That's everything you need to know about bodies and components in Fusion. Thanks for watching, and if this was helpful, please subscribe so you don't miss any more tips from the Autodesk Fusion team.